Yes, people, how's it going? Welcome back to Lily White Lane. Hope that you're all doing good. Hope that you're all keeping safe and well. And in the words of Alan Partridge, I hope that you're all having a really good Monday and start your week wherever you are in the world and whatever you are planning to get up to today and over the rest of the week as a whole. And you are all very welcome along to your Aston Villa versus Tottenham Hotspur match. Do you brief the show where we take a look at Analyze? And go through all of the big talking points coming out of Tottenham Hotspur's latest game. But before we delve into them, make sure, if you haven't already, to smash that subscribe button. Give an AJ right hand. What a punch that was on Friday night. Also, be sure to smash that like button and tap that notification bell to be notified. And let know every single time we upload a new piece of Tottenham or football content on the Little White Lane YouTube channel. Also, be sure to comment your thoughts and opinions down below on today's video and yesterday's game at Villa Park and without further ado let's delve into the debrief and let's talk about yesterday's game I thought I was watching CM Punk in WWE because it was clobbering time yesterday for Unai Emery's Villa 4-0 to the mighty Spurs all the Villa fans who were talking about minding the gap of pipe down and what a fantastic performance it was from Ange Postecoglou's boys the high press was excellent yesterday the midfield overload was brilliant defensively we looked unbelievably solid and that second half performance was in my opinion our best 45 minutes in a game all season long complete and utter control from minute one and especially in that second half as I say the four goals that we scored all absolutely brilliant the chances that we were creating were fantastic it was a great performance yesterday from Spurs and I think the result was fantastic, but I'm more pleased with the performance because performances recently haven't quite been up to the standard that we saw earlier in the season. And a lot of that, in my opinion, it showed yesterday was down to us missing so many players due to injury. But in my opinion, since that Newcastle game in December, we haven't quite been the same team in the way that we play. We've had spells on gone up to gear five for about 10 to 15 minutes in certain games. But apart from that... We haven't really stepped up the Brentford game, the Everton game, the Burnley game in the Cup, the Man City game. Every game we've had, in my opinion, this year, we've had good spells in, hence the fact we've gotten results in a lot of them. But we haven't consistently played well for 90 minutes in them. Yesterday we did. First 45 minutes was a good performance from Spurs. The second 45 minutes was an unreal performance from Spurs. It really was. But from minute one, we controlled the game. Villa offered absolutely nothing. And... The crowd was absolutely silent at Villa Park. It really was. I thought it was a library that we were playing in, honestly. But a lot of that, as I say, whilst it was down to their performance, was down to our performance. We didn't allow Villa to get the ball. We took the sting out of the atmosphere straight away by keeping possession for the first 10 minutes, which was crucial at a ground like that. And as I say, we controlled the ball for that first 45. The only thing we were missing in that first half was that end product, that that final third pass, that final shot, as I say, we got it in the second half. Four fantastic goals created, started brilliantly. That second half performance, as I say, I can't get over how good we were. I mean, Villa weren't great whatsoever, but we were absolutely brilliant. We really were. Our press was excellent. The high line held itself together brilliantly. Some really, really good performances in there yesterday for Tottenham Hotspur. I thought Brennan Johnson, BJ, don't get the wrong idea by his initials. I thought he was absolutely fantastic yesterday. We'll talk a little bit more about him in a minute. Alongside others such as Papi Matasar, Mickey Vadden, Venny when he was on the pitch, Radu Dragazin, Destiny, Doji, Hyungman, Sun. We'll get onto performances in a minute. But that top four race now is very much on. If Villa would have won yesterday, it would have been eight points for them compared to us. Eight points clear. And in my opinion, eight points clear, even though there's, what, nine, ten games left in the season, that would have been done. That that would have been your lot. Bob's your uncle, Villa get Champions League football. But a win yesterday, as I say, two points off them now with a game in hand. We win next Saturday before they play on Sunday. We go a point clear. Then there's a lot of pressure on that game. And it's not an easy game they have either. It's not Burnley at home or Sheffield at home. It's West Ham away. Maybe, you know, they'll want to play away because they're Villa Park form whilst it was so good earlier in the season, hasn't been great whatsoever. But that's not an easy game whatsoever. West Ham have been stepping things up a little bit recently. I know they drew to Burnley yesterday, but trying to attack teams a little bit more. They've got some dangerous players. And there'll be a lot of pressure 
on Aston Villa. And in my opinion, they could be like gremlins on Sunday. When the bright lights are out, they disappear and it hurts them. They may just crumble like a chocolate digestive in a milky tea and hand us that top four spot. But there's still a lot of football to be played. But in my opinion, I'm not saying that we guarantee Champions League football. In my opinion, though, we're the favourites now. And in my opinion, when you consider that both of us have got to play the top three, even though we play them all in a row, I think we can get Champions League football game in hand. Showed why we're the better team than yesterday. We should have destroyed them at our ground. And as I say, they haven't been in this position before Aston Villa. No doubt about it. Emery's doing a fantastic job. Relegation battle last season before he came in. He got them, you know, Conference League football. They're still in that. We'll see if they can progress this Thursday. Hopefully they do, to be 100% honest. So that's that Thursday-Sunday thing continues for them. But as I say... Pretty much guaranteed the Europa League spot, so no doubt about it, Emery's doing a great job. But the, can they go that stretch further? I'm not sure they've got it in them. I really am not sure. And yesterday we showed that we have. And yesterday we showed that we're going to put, uh, push them right until the end. So the pressure's on Aston Villa. In my opinion, though, it's in our hands. It's in our hands now to get it, and we should hopefully get Champions League football. And even if we don't, I don't want to hear any stupid, you know, overreactionary rubbish from our fan base because fifth is a very, very good season for Spurs when you consider we finished 8th and some of the results we had last season. But look, let's talk about a few performances yesterday. And the first man I want to talk about is Brennan Johnson. I'm not going to lie to you guys, I was sceptical about the lineup when I saw it. I was really, really, really happy with the back four in the midfield, but I was sceptical about Johnson starting. Because recently he's been coming off the bench, making cameos, and those cameos have been brilliant. But starting from minute one, when I've seen him start before, he hasn't been great. He's looked like he's lacked confidence, as I say, and the reason he's so good coming off the bench is because he injects a bit of pace late in the game against a low block and they can't deal with him. Whereas I thought yesterday Villa would set up differently. I thought Brennan Johnson may really struggle. He was our man of the match, in my opinion. He was our man of the match. If we were doing play ratings, I'll give him a 10. Because what more do you actually want your winger to do? Ran at Matty Cash every opportunity that he got and skinned him brilliant stuff yesterday and just as I say he got his goal which was a brilliant finish straight into the roof of the net and his assist for Werner which was fantastic but the bit that impressed me most and what impressed me more than his goal contributions yesterday was his work on that left hand side just constantly constantly running at Aston Villa trying to create chances trying to whip in a cross he was brilliant he really was brilliant yesterday and a lot of credit has to go to Brennan Johnson I was skeptical of him for a long time but I didn't understand the Spurs fans who said that they couldn't see a player in there because it was evidently clear, you know, there's a player in there. <clears throat> it's about whether we could get the confidence, very much like with Charleston, and he's getting it now. <clears throat> he scored against Brighton, scored last weekend again, and or, or, did he score? I can't remember, but he, he got that assist for Werner, didn't he? Yeah, he didn't score. He got that brilliant assist for Werner and was excellent in that game. And then yesterday, scored, got an assist and played really well. His goal contributions are rising. His confidence is rising. I think we've not seen the best of Brennan Johnson yet. But yesterday was a really, really good performance. And it shows that he's a player who's going in the right direction at this football club. Pape Matasar, the lawnmower as I like to call him. Because he covers every blade of grass on that football pitch when he's on there. Those first 20 minutes of the second half, every single loose ball, loose touch from Villa, Papin Atasar was on it. Brilliant stuff from him. And that cross, as I say, KDB-esque that was. Absolutely unreal ball in. Takes one touch. And you've got to consider, it's not Madison who's there in the middle of the box, you know, by himself. There's two Villa players around him. There's quite a range between Papin Atasar and James Madison. And that perfection with that cross, considering how far they are, and James Madison's being marked by two men, it's excellent. James Madison does well, it's not a tap in, he has to, you know, lean forward and, and move his feet in a very peculiar way. But that ball in from Pape Matasar, just absolutely excellent, controlled the game, and having him next to Bissouma, as I say, it improved Bissouma's performance. Whilst I was concerned about Johnson when I first uh, saw the team sheet, I wasn't whatsoever Papi Matasar, because I know what I'm going to get with uh, Papi Matasar, consistency, consistently good, consistently puts in 7 or 8 out of 10, and yesterday was a 9 out of 10 in my opinion, he was absolutely brilliant for minute 1, his uh, performance um Improved Bissouma's recently. Bissouma hasn't been quite up to it next to Ben Tanker, but it's great to have him back in the lineup. We missed him in January, and yeah, what a player he is! At such a young age as well, to have that much consistency as well as ability, 
he's got a lot of potential. And again, I'm very glad that he's, he's, he's you know, realising that potential and learning on the job under Ange Postecoglou, who's a great manager, you know, to develop you. So, brilliant from Papi Mata. So, and of course, we've got to talk about Hyung Min Sun. The whole team was brilliant yesterday, but these are the three performances I wanted to highlight. And Hyung Min Sun yesterday, the guy is just world class, isn't he? He is just world class. I mean, I don't think we give him enough praise because we're so used to how good he is. And I think when Hyung Min Sun eventually leaves, we'll realise how much we will miss him and how good of a player he really was. And yesterday again, the guy was just unreal. Absolutely unreal. We could have had a shot for that second goal, but lays it off to Brennan Johnson instead of Kudusevsky as well. It's a brilliant pass. Builds, you know, Johnson's confidence again. And that goal, the cutback from Kudusevsky. Kudusevsky, again, I thought in the first half he wasn't great. Second half, he was brilliant, as I say, creating opportunities left, right and centre on that right-hand side, dropping a little bit more deeper and holding up the ball. But, Lovely ball in from Kulusevsky. There's still a lot of work for Hyung Min Sun to do and just rifles it into the back of the net. It's the power that beats Emmy Martinez. And as I say, Hyung Min Sun yesterday, just absolutely brilliant. But such a good performance. Really was a good performance. The clean sheet as well. We haven't had one of those for a long, long time. Our best performance this year and since that Newcastle game. Because we didn't perform well for 10 to 15 minutes in that game. We performed well for the first 45 and we performed excellently in that second 45. A really, really good performance. Every player, in my opinion, gets 7 or 8 or above out of 10. There wasn't one bad performance or, or off performance yesterday for any Spurs players. It was just a great day. And to go to Villa Park and play like that as well. A ground that a lot of teams have went to and fallen. The likes of Arsenal and Manchester City. A team who are in the top four in a game like that with such high stakes. It was brilliant. It really was brilliant. But... From a Villa perspective, I'd be very annoyed if I was a Villa fan. Unai Emery, he saw what Crystal Palace did and what Brentford did and what these teams who have sort of stifled Spurs at times in games had done and, and tried to set up with a back three and, and, and play the long ball over the top. But yesterday, we had too much quality for them. And I think if they actually would have come at us at home, it could have been a different day. Could have been a very different story. At our stadium, they counter-attacked us. They had a few opportunities. They beat us. We should have won that game by five or six, like we did yesterday, because we were by far the better team. But if they come at us a little bit yesterday, the crowd gets up for it. They create some opportunities. Could have got something. Could have won it. But they didn't. They, did, they almost looked like they set up for a draw. The back three was confusing, because you've got to think, as I say, Palace players have been used to doing that under Hodgson. Glasner comes in, it's the same thing. Brentford have been used to doing that. They don't play with a back three, so the players didn't really know what they were doing. And a lot of the teams that have set up, as I say, with a back three have transitioned into that back five in defence, and pretty much played a 5-5-0 five, five, when, when defending. Villa didn't. They just played a back three with, with you know players still going forward. No one really looked like they knew what they were doing in that system and we just nicked it off them a few times and created opportunities and as I say our, our, our second goal comes from completely stealing it off them it weren't great whatsoever from Villa I think we silenced the atmosphere early on by keeping the ball really well but really really poor for Aston Villa and as I say are they going to be gremlins are they going to are they going to hide away when when the light shines brightest. It's, it's going to be a very, very interesting end of the season. Still a lot of things up for grabs. But Emery got it completely wrong. He really did. I think he's a great manager. What he's done with Aston Villa is superb. But got it very, very wrong yesterday, in my opinion. I've heard a lot of Villa fans talking about that red hard. Uh, red hard? That red hard, that's something else. But I've heard a lot of Villa fans talking about that red card. And... A lot of them complaining about it. And, and this is why slow motion is rubbish for replays. Look at that in real time. It's a blatant red card. McGinn has zero eyes whatsoever on the ball. All on Udoji. Flies in at some pace. You know, kicks Udoji directly in the shit. It, it, it's a red. It's a red all day long with a pace and power he's coming in with in real time when you watch it. Not even looking at the ball whatsoever completely, you know, going for the man. It's not a follow through or anything. It's just completely on your doji. That's a red all day long. That's a red all day long. And Villa fans complaining about our players I've seen, you know, sort of surrounding the ref and, and convincing him. Is that your stadium? If, if the ref's going to favour anything, he's going to favour you. And in my opinion, the ref was poor yesterday. Bissouma, you know, nicked the ball off Villa and when we were three on two in in an attacking position earlier in the first half and he gave it as a foul when he completely and utterly got the ball. And he booked Saar for something stupid as well. You know, the ref wasn't great whatsoever today. So 
I don't know, or, or yesterday, I don't know how they can complain about that. It's, it, it's a red card all day long, it is. And I was glad to see McGinn come off. And everything just went perfectly. Villa fans are excellent. Emery's a good manager. But some of their players are dirty little shits. They really are. And Matty Cash, John McGinn. It was great to see them both humble yesterday. One being sent off and one, as I say, I, I love the fact that Ben Sunker left one on Matty Cash. It's only a shame that he didn't injure him, eh? And, and for any Villa fans saying, oh, you're wishing injury upon players, come on. I, I don't care. Because you were all laughing when Cash injured Doherty. You were all laughing when Cash in, uh, injured Ben Tanko. Enjoy the next few games without McGinn and that rubbish right back who's just an idiot. You know, he, he, he's not even that great of a player. He, he really isn't. I, I really dislike him. He's reckless and it was great to see him alongside a lot of those Villa players humbled yesterday. As I say, nothing personal against Villa fans. I think, you know, when that stadium gets rocking, it, it, it's a great ground. But... Our record there was, you know, has been superb. We had our first eleven back yesterday, played some great football, but a lot of their players are very dislikable. So it's good to see a lot of them very humbled after yesterday. One more player I do want to talk about. I forgot to mention him. I've got it written down. Radu Dragazin. Really good stuff yesterday from Radu Dragazin. Big, big moment to come on in a game like that. Before they were down to ten men. Got a yellow card quite cleverly, to be honest, because Villa could have broken away. And some of the blocks that he made were absolutely brilliant. Really like what I saw from Radu yesterday. Would he be able to sustain it for 90 minutes? You know, if, if Mickey is injured, which hopefully isn't, I'm not sure. But good stuff from Radu Dragas in yesterday. It was good stuff. And just just a very, very good, enjoyable performance to watch from Spurs. That second half was total football. If we can perform like that in April against all four of those sides, right? Against Newcastle, Manchester City, Arsenal and Liverpool... I can see us taking seven or nine points out of those four. And people might call that crazy, but we're going to have a big effect on the tight race this season. We play all three of them. Surely we win one of them or take points off one of them. Surely. And I think, to be honest, these big games favour us more. When you're playing against the Palace or a Brentford or a Luton in a few weeks, which won't be easy, you know, they sit back, low block, back three, hard to break down. It's not easy. When teams play a high line against us, try and press us, that's what we want. It may go tits up, but that's how we score our goals. That's why we played so well earlier in the season. That You don't you know our, our really good performances were the ones against Man United. You know, the, the one against Arsenal because they were coming at us and we could exploit the midfield overload and play through the lines. And I think in April, whilst the results may not be there, the performances will. And through that, I think we may get a few wins, maybe a few draws. We'll see what happens when we get there. But before we get there, I think we need to win our next few. Fulham, Luton, West Ham, Nottingham Forest. That should be, to be 100% honest with you guys, that's got to be 10 or 12 points. That's got to be 10 or 12 points. We can't afford to lose any of those heading into April. And I think if we win those games, a lot of pressure on Aston Villa. And yes, it's, it's, it's going to be an interesting run in, an interesting one uh, end to the season. But I'm just really chuffed with yesterday's performance. And Postacoglu again with the lineup got it bang on. Brennan Johnson, I was questioning a little bit. He stepped up in there. Papi Matasar stepped up. His substitutions perfectly timed. Hui Bier, who, who, but by the way, that brilliant bit of skill where he turned it from defence to an attack with a, a little Cruyff turn. That was excellent. But yeah, just everything went right for us yesterday. And it's so good to have a day like that where we win a game and we're just genuinely ecstatic as Spurs fans. We don't come away from a win going, OK, job done, got to do it. A few negatives to analyse. No, we come out yesterday ecstatic because that was a superb performance. And a performance that, again... Shows that we're going in the right direction. We're just at the start of what we're trying to do here, right? That's what Ange keeps saying and that's what I'll keep saying. Any fans who have been criticising us recently, I want you to go back and watch some of the performances that we had last season. And remember how bad it was. Especially if we don't get top four and any fans are ranting. Go back at last season. The progress that we're already seeing in phase one of this rebuild is absolutely outstanding. In fifth or fourth in Ange's first season, whether we get the Champions League through coefficiency or not, that's a great season. It really is a great season. And if Ange Postcoglu is backed, the Premier League better beware. They do. It's a big if because we know Daniel Levy is Spurs fans and I'm praying that in the summer, no matter what, he gets the players, not necessarily for loads of money, but the fittest system that he wants. If Ange Postcoglu is backed, like Arteta has been, like Pep has been, like Klopp has been. <sighs> Teams have got to be scared. Teams have got to be scared of us. I'm not joking around. You look at look at the amount of money that's been spent on that Arsenal squad, that City squad, that Liverpool squad compared to us, and still we're competing with them in games. 
beating them in games, taking points off them in games. You know, so Andrew Postacoglu is a fantastic manager. I love what he's doing at Tottenham Hotspur. He got it bang on yesterday. The players got it bang on an excellent day. Villa Park, as I say, they're, 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 they're cheeky little tweet in November. Doesn't look so cheeky now. Three point lane, okay. Pipe down, pipe down, lads. Pipe down. Talk when you win a few more games at your own ground against us. Because I believe that's that's 14 games now where you've won one of the last 14 against us at Villa Park. We've won nine, We've won 10 out of the last 11 games at your ground. I mean, it's tough old life, isn't it? Tough old life. But look, guys, you've been absolutely... Uh, I can't speak. You've been absolutely awesome. Thank you for watching this video. Great day yesterday. Big game on the weekend. We'll be previewing that. And then obviously the uh, the shitty international break, which no one's looking forward to. But nevertheless, got to get through it. And then a big run in towards the end of the season. Thank you for watching this video. Take care of yourselves. All the best. And as always, Colony Spurs. In Big Antry Trust, Enoch and Levy out.